One with wind and cloud. Stabilize. Embrace the ice. up boys ayaka just happens to be one of the funnest sword users in the game at this point completely subjective i know but she is really really fun i've spent the last week and a half using her in various situations and while only a small part of that has actually been uh, fully maxed out at level 90 with level 8 talents i really got to see some progression as i built her rather than how other five stars that recently have been released have kind of played out for me not saying that i like that please mihoyo it was extremely frustrating to do this and to have to farm like literally asap but i definitely have a stronger appreciation for ayaka than somebody like klee who i just remembered i didn't do a video on but i pre-farmed for her and it was a lot different really quickly let's take an overview of her kit and if you've already played with ayaka and kind of experimented with her then you can probably skip this entire section otherwise let's kind of talk about what makes her so much fun to play so her normal attack is called kamisato art kabuki uh, it includes her normal charged and plunge attacks. Her normal attacks are actually really good. Uh, move value wise, she currently has the highest move values out of any sword character currently in the game. You can actually see more information about move values in a video that I'm going to put in that corner up there. This basically just means that she has the talent scaling that points to being a strong DPS or main carry. She likes to be on the field is kind of just what it points to. Her charge attack is kind of what makes her so special though. Not only can you infuse it with cryo with your dash called Kamisato Art Senho, which we'll get to in a second, but it also has hit scan, which is basically just like an auto aim kind of mechanic that used in it's used in a bunch of different types of games around various scenarios. Uh, but on top of the hit scan, not only does it have that, it is also AOE, which means that it can even hit enemies behind Ayaka. Next, we actually have Kamisato Art Hyoka. Yep. I'm screwing this up. Uh, it's her elemental skill, essentially, and it basically throws out a large AoE onto the ground as she raises cryo from beneath the enemies, dealing cryo damage if they are inside of the circle. It actually has really good scaling and really good damage overall. I have obviously not leveled it up very far just because uh, we'll get to the reasons why here in a minute. It is the least important of her talents to level up, in my opinion, but it still is very valuable if you do level it up it's not a complete waste also it generates between four and five particles on average uh, every time you use it which is actually really freaking good next we actually have kamisato art so Metsu, arguably it's going to be the most important talent in her kit. Using her burst, she spawns a giant cryo blizzard kind of thing, and uh, it moves in a straight line towards the enemies. That actually kind of means that it is dependent on your positioning to get the maximum benefit out of it, but it actually kind of will stick to enemies in a way. It just kind of gets like, it won't move through enemies if they are like frozen usually uh but it does have some inconsistencies and sometimes little small enemies like hill trolls and stuff like that will kind of like seep through and kind of not get hit by it next we actually have kamisato art senho which is the talent that we actually mentioned earlier it is her unique dash very similar to mona which it's just an alternative sprint which means she just goes underground kind of into like a puddle of ice sort of thing and she dashes across the ground uh, it does actually apply cryo to enemies and it actually does infuse your normal charge and plunge attacks with cryo for five full seconds and a lot of people are probably going to be like, hey, that, that's bad. Mona's dash sucks. Why would they give Ayaka the same thing? They updated it in 2.0. It's not nearly as obnoxious as it was in previous versions, but it is still something that I am not fully used to even after playing so much Mona and Ayaka after she released. It's still kind of awkward to get used to sometimes. Next, we have Amatsumi Kunutsumi Sanctification. So basically, after you use your elemental skill, you just get an increase in normal and charge attack damage uh, by 30% for six seconds. Uh, it, it's just for free. You don't actually even have to hit anybody. You just use it and it works. Next, we actually have Kanten Somyo. Yep, 
Sen Senmyo? Yep. Uh, Blessing, which actually refunds 10 stamina and gives you a 18% increase in your cryo bonus damage for 10 seconds when you apply cryo to enemies after you come out of your dash. It is important to note that you do have to apply the cryo to the enemy for this to proc, but boy is it nice when it does. And last but not least, we do have Fruits of Shinsa. I uh, just you 10% chance of duplicating weapon materials when you craft. Cool. So as I kind of alluded to earlier, what is the order that you should be leveling these things up? The TLDR, in my opinion, is your elemental burst and your normal attack should be evenly matched. If you had to choose between the two, go with your burst and then your elemental skill can kind of be your last priority. But there's a slight caveat. So our burst essentially is going to be doing the most amounts of damage in the kit, pinning that you aren't monkey brain like me and don't activate it and watch it veer off into the void sometimes. But I would highly recommend focusing on that first and then you can put a lot more emphasis on your normal attack or on your elemental skill, depending on how you plan on using the team around her. If you are going to be using Ayaka as the main carry, as in she is going to be on the field all the time, you definitely want to level up your normal attacks way more often than your elemental skill. If you are going to be using her in a quick swap team where she is not going to take up a ton of field time, you may want to focus more on her elemental skill as like that one big burst of damage that you can do with it may be more valuable to you than the the three or four hits that you might get off with her normal attacks. That is going to be completely dependent on you, and I can't tell you how to necessarily decide between those two teams. That is going to be up to you. Although I do want you to kind of keep in mind that uh, her normal attacks and her bursts are pretty much like butter and toast. You could definitely eat them separately, but they're just better together. To make the weapon section of this guide as simple as possible, I'm actually just going to show you a list in which all of the credit actually goes to Citri, and their spreadsheet will actually be linked down in the description for you to go over if you'd like. The TLDR here, out of the five stars, Miss Splitter is top choice. We have Summit Shaper and then Primordial Jade Cutter, followed by the four star top three options would be Black Cliff Longsword, black sword itself and the flute and then your free to play options are definitely going to be something like harbinger of dawn and then the craftable sword from inazuma the amanoma kageuchi to explain a little bit more the reason that summit shaper is preferred over primordial jade cutter simply comes down to the crit rate once we get into our artifacts here in just a minute we will be it'll be a little bit more obvious but crit rate to an extent kind of gets wasted and on average you're going to be wasting some potential by having 44.1 percent crit rate coming from your weapon but obviously if you're trying to min max your damage pay close attention to the list that you see and just basically determine what weapon works best for you but do pay attention to the notes because they do stipulate where certain weapons like with their stacks or with their passives proccing and stuff like that it, it you just kind of have to pay attention to determine which one's best for you now for your artifacts i'm basically going to show you a very similar chart also from citri which is on the same spreadsheet that you can find linked in the description the tldr here is basically four piece blizzard strayer is your best option and then if you want to go with something a little different you may want to do two piece of blizzard strayer and pair it with either a two piece of gladiator or a two piece of noblesse so being a cryo character, there are some obvious choices in this department, and you'd be very astute to think that the obvious choice is the best because sometimes it just works out like that. Anyways, Blizzard Strayer is the top choice here, and it isn't super hard for Ayaka to keep the four piece passive alive all the time. It can actually be pretty hard to maximize substats and such when you are shooting for a full four piece set though. Therefore, if you do need to break off and use two different sets, choose either a Gladiator or Noblest to pair with the Blizzard Strayer and they're actually quite close in their performance compared to each combination, but they are considerably worse rather than the four-piece Blizzard Strayer. So ultimately, try to strive for that. As for your stats, you definitely want to choose uh, attack percent, cryo percent, and crit percent. Uh, if you are using the four piece Blizzard Strayer, definitely go with crit damage on the circlet, uh, which actually to explain the primordial jade cutter conundrum. So if you do remember on the list that I showed, you will notice that the less crit rate substats that you had, the better that primordial jade cutter performed. That's because the roll into a crit rate is basically wasted when you have 44.1% crit rate on your weapon. You also get 
40% crit rate from your artifacts and 15% crit rate from the cryo resonance plus the 5% base that every character comes with and that already puts you at 104.1 which already feels like a deadly sin to even think about. So you literally can't get any crit rate substats without it being completely wasted. So it'd usually just be better to have it in crit damage or literally anything else at this point but overall it's just more reasonable more flexible really to just go with summit shaper over primordial jade cutter for that reason so now that your ayaka is looking like a buff baron bunny who do you pair with well there's two options basically perma freeze and quick swap so perma freeze is basically just going to be a cryo battery a hydro applicator and a flex which is typically a veritas and veneer user for the cryo battery diona kaya rosaria all work pretty well here diona has healing uh, kaya has extra cryo for applications in between uh rosaria can actually provide extra crit rate if you need it for your hydro applicator sing show mona and barbara all work pretty well for hydro uh sing show is the perfect uh, sub DPS Mona can actually provide aggro, which is actually helpful for when you use Ayaka's burst. And Barbara is pretty decent because you actually need to be pretty up close to do a lot of damage with Ayaka, but you're just gonna have to worry about freezing yourself sometimes. And for the flex spot, for the Veritas and Venue users, you could definitely go with Kazua or Venti. They both work really well. And Ayaka actually pairs really well with Venti in a lot of situations. Uh, she can actually hit with her charge attack and Venti's burst, even though Venti's burst lifts enemies off the ground. So it actually works out pretty good. If you don't want to go with a Veritas and Veneer user, you could do something like Zhongli, Bennett, uh, basically any kind of like Melter if you wanted to, like, um, you know, Shangling or I don't know somebody else uh, just let your imagination kind of run wild with this slot it truly is up to you who you feel comfortable playing quick swap is basically two animal characters with a flex slot typically a cryo for the energy and the resonance but the two animal characters should at least include a four piece veridescent veneer user and possibly a four piece noblest user if your flex spot doesn't use that basically venti or kazua or even gene work really good here for the flex spot zhongli bennett singshu mona all of those work really well for flexing. Again, it's literally just up to you and who you feel comfortable putting on the team. Ayaka truly is shaping up to be a great cryo DPS. If you're still on the fence about pulling for her, uh, she's definitely not anything to scoff at, but she's not 100% needed, of course, for anything. And I know that they've already started teasing characters for 2.1. And, you know, it, it, the benefits of having Ayaka is that she's really straightforward to build. There's nothing super complex or really difficult to work around in her kit. She's just one of those characters that's like, hey, you can slap a bunch of really good good artifacts really good weapons on her and she will perform exactly how you would expect but that's going to be it for the guide today guys thank you so much for hanging out thank you so much for watching uh hopefully you guys are having fun with the yaka if you have her if you are still trying to pull her best of luck to you yeah there, there's a little bit of time left but not a ton so yeah see ya